Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to show you how to create a warp text effect on any of your photos very, very easily in Photoshop. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and let's get straight into it. So first things first, if you don't have Photoshop, Adobe is currently having a promotion where all students and teachers can get over 60% off all the Adobe applications. So make sure to check the link in the description for that. So right here, I have a photo of LeBron James and basically I'm going to warp the text around him. So this effect works with any photo, any image, any object. Um, so you can be very flexible with this. So the first thing we want to do is actually select the subject. So there's many ways you can do this. You can use the pen tool, you can use the quick selection tool, but I'm going to show you a quick way I like to do it. And the great thing about this is you don't actually have to make it 100% precise in order to achieve this effect. So I'm going to click on the quick selection tool right here, and I'm going to click on select subject. Only the newer versions of Photoshop have this update, so make sure to update your Photoshop in case you don't see select subject right here. So right here we have uh, LeBron selected. Obviously it is not 100% perfect. You can see his ear is slightly off, uh, but we're not really gonna worry about that. Next, we're gonna go to select, modify, and expand. Basically we wanna expand this mask so that it almost creates a border around him and that's where the text is gonna appear. And depending on your canvas size, you're going to adjust the amount of pixels to expand by differently. So my image is a little bit smaller, so I'm going to expand by 25 pixels. But if you have a bigger image, like a 4K image, you might want to expand by 100 or 200 pixels. So I'm going to expand by 25 right here. And you can see now it creates like this border around him. And that's exactly where the text is going to go. Next, you want to smoothen out this uh, little mask. So we're going to go to select, modify and smooth right here. In here. And the sample radius is also going to depend on how smooth you want it. Um, if you have a bigger canvas size, you probably want to make the sample radius greater. But I think around 50 works for me. You can see it smoothens out any of the hiccups that appeared before. And now we want to right click, press on make work path. Basically that will turn the mask into these little points. And now what we can do is click on the text tool right here and actually click on that uh, border. So if you see right here, the icon changes when I hover over this mask right there. This is where the effect comes in. So if I deleted everything and typed in LeBron James and just had this repeat a bunch of different times. So I'm just going to copy and paste it, copy and paste it, copy and paste it. You can have this effect. And if you want to change the font, uh, the spacing, all that sort of stuff, you can press control A, which is basically just highlighting all the text and press control T. Control T will show up the character and paragraph options. And right here you can see the vertical alignments at 380. The vertical alignment is basically the spacing between each of the text. So if you wanted it to be smaller, you would just decrease this number. So usually it's at zero, but you can see here the letters are squished because of that. So I am going to increase it a little bit. So right here is an example of how this would look like. And it actually looks really cool if you layer this. So if you create multiple masks, and it sort of repeats on and on and on. So in order to do that repeating process, you can just duplicate your layer. So press Control J and then press Control T to transform. And then you just make this bigger and then you can repeat the process. And yeah, this is how it looks like. You can obviously make the second and third layers a little bit better. If you created a better path for the text, the path for the second and third duplicates are based off the first layer, which is based off LeBron's shape, right? So if you really wanted this to be exact, you would probably want to merge these two layers and repeat the process from the beginning. But either way, I like how this looks like. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Check out my Discord channel in the pinned comment below. And yeah, my name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.